what do you do? I mean, instinctively you understand there's a no refund policy. So I tend to just laugh good naturedly at myself and then blast a load right in his face. And ever since this relationship has been happening, I've been trying to like fix up my place a little bit because my apartment right now is very male oriented. It's geared for me. Like all I have is like signed Black Sabbath shit on the walls, like photos of me and Ozzy and me and Kiss. It's like my girlfriend comes over and she feels like she's dating a 12 year old retard. <laughs> but I don't know what to buy that she would like. I'm an idiot. I don't know what women want. I would just hang up giant photos of dicks. Eh? You like that, you size queen? <laughs> so I enlisted the help of my gay friend because gay people have so much of a better vibe for a woman's sensibility than, than straight men do. But gay people are very arrogant. Like I took my friend uh, uh, furniture shopping and he's a gay comic and I found a sofa that I love. So I call him over, I'm like, you know, what do you think? And he's so condescending, he runs his hand over the back and he's like, ugh, you idiot, the material's too rough. Then I realized we had different priorities when sofa shopping. <laughs> when I'm buying one, I don't have to wonder what it's gonna feel like mushed into my face for an hour at a time. <laughs> he has to worry about that because he has narcolepsy. <laughs> he tends to doze off while he's being poked in the shitter. But I'm not homophobic, I guess because I've been such a pervert for so long. Like, I've been sexually active since I was in second grade. And, you know, growing up, I didn't give a shit. I mean, I played Monster Rain when I was a kid, which like, I told... <laughs> I did tell that story on the radio. And uh, it was a fun little game. Miss, you look a little confused. Are you not familiar with it? <laughs> you never heard of Monster Rain? It's the most adorable thing. <laughs> And it's true, too. Uh, when I was very young, my little friend and I would walk along, and one of us would yell, Monster Rain! And then to get away from the Monster Rain, we'd hide under a porch and blow each other. That's how we escaped the monster rain. <laughs> In hindsight, an umbrella would have been more prudent. And uh, it wasn't about being gay, though. It was just about feeling somebody's mouth on your dick. And the key... <laughs> Again, second grade. Uh, it was about getting your friend to go first. Because, like, the key... <laughs> Because there's no subtlety when you're that young. Like, if my friend would blow me and then go, my turn, you know, I'd be like, eh, I gotta go eat lunch. <laughs> and leave him under the porch with his shame and dick breath. <laughs> then I'd rat him out to the whole neighborhood. He's a queer bait, he licked my dingle. <laughs> but I think gay men are fascinating, though, because I heard they do this thing called docking. All right, a couple people have heard of this. Docking, supposedly, is when two guys will stand face to face and put their dickheads together. And one of the guys has to be uncircumcised. And, <laughs> and the uncircumcised guy peels his foreskin over the head of the other guy's penis. And that's where I bailed out of the conversation. I am so mad at myself, I really wish I had stuck with it because I'm dying to know what happens next. <laughs> what do you do? Do you say anything to each other or do you just look at each other and laugh hysterically? <laughs> I'm actually jealous. That's the coolest thing I've ever heard of, that gay guys can refuel in midair. <laughs> and I did my first Midwestern uh, gigs 
I was in Kansas City, actually at the same time that that uh, hurricane, uh, tornado, what is it? Tornado? Whatever, whatever, a hillbilly mover. <laughs> Merciful wind from a knowledgeable God. <laughs> and uh, I spent some time down south, I went to Dallas, which was really cool. When I was down there, I went to see where JFK was shot at Dealey Plaza. Has anybody uh, made the trip, made that pilgrimage down there? <laughs> it's kind of awe-inspiring, right? It's, uh, it's smaller than I thought it would be. And the only difference between that day and today is the Stemmons Freeway sign, which he disappeared behind, has been taken away. And where he took the third and final shot, a big white X has been painted in the street so you know exactly where it happened. Um, at least I hope that was put there after the assassination. <laughs> if that was there the day of, that's sloppy police work. Oswald didn't act alone, he had a Puerto Rican kid with him. <laughs> but there's an X, and what people will do is when traffic is stopped up at the light, they run out into the street, they stand on the X, and they get their photos taken. And you're watching this like, you voyeuristic, morbid piece of shit. So it's your turn to have your photo taken. You try to look dignified. <laughs> I didn't care, I fucked around. <laughs> I even did a little Jackie. <laughs> but after I came off the X, this annoying, awful couple was behind me, and they had just been snipping at each other the whole time. And so the awful woman runs out, and she's standing there, and she's just, you know, yelling at her stupid husband, and this nervous fruit is trying to operate his camera. <laughs> and a car is headed towards her, and she doesn't see it, so I go, <gasps> let it happen. <laughs> I saw the greatest story of my life about to unfold, and stupid pussy-whipped husband warned her, and as he warned her, you could see him regretting it, because he's like, get out of the way! But in, in his face, he was like, why the fuck am I saying this? <laughs> How funny would that have been? Two people in history killed on that spot, JFK and that bitch. <laughs> and I actually lived uh, out in Los Angeles for a little while when I was out there shooting uh, Lucky Louie. I thank those of you that supported Lucky Louie. <laughs> Despite my fucking muggy acting, where are you, Lou? <laughs> Jesus Christ. And I think we deserve season two. Unfortunately, we got canceled, but I mean, that happens. Um, what bothers me more, it's not the fact that we got canceled, it's the fact that we got canceled and you can still turn on eight different channels and watch poker. <laughs> Enough with the poker obsession in this country. My fat friend is obsessed with it. He's like, dude, you wanna play Hold'em? Let's play Hold'em. All right, how about this? I'll pull out my balls, hold them with your mouth. <laughs> and it kind of bugs me, because to me, they're not showing Gamblers, like, look, I'm a recovering alcoholic and a recovering addict. I understand the mania of obsession. You know, if one is good, 50 is better. I mean, I cannot stop ever. So show me that type of gambler. Don't show me the top one one thousandth of a percent of rich gamblers. Show me the average schlub. Tune in next week and watch Doyle Brunson punch his wife in the face because she's crying because the lights are turned off again. I don't think those guys are playing for their own money anyway, because they're all celebrities now. So they're playing for sponsor money or network money. To me, that's not interesting. How about a little risk? That would make it interesting to me as a viewer. Like if they win, they keep the money, but if they lose, they have to drink gas or blow an AIDS patient. <laughs> a bit harsh, perhaps, <laughs> but let's see your poker face now, motherfucker.
Well, judging by the looks of things, if he doesn't pull a five or a seven, he's gonna be losing weight rapidly. <laughs> and I actually, I actually enjoyed LA more than I ever have. I kind of like it out there now, um, but I had a very bad injury. A lot of people have heard me complain about my foot. Um, I twisted my ankle horribly. What actually happened is I was in a, a building in Los Angeles that was burning. And I was trying to run out, of course, because, you know, nobody wants to lose their lips and eyelashes. I mean, you know, Jesus Christ. God bless burn victims. They always look like they just walked into their own surprise party. <laughs> Little tuft of hair. If it's any consolation, I don't really feel good about that line either. <laughs> so I'm in this building and I'm running for the front door and I tripped over a small um, kid who had fallen. <laughs> totally his fault. You know how selfish children are. Help me, fuck you. <laughs> and now I gotta get surgery. Um, I could have avoided surgery if I had just put some insoles in that were supportive, but did you ever remember the commercial for a product and the commercial is so awful, you don't want to support that advertising through product purchase? That you gelin ad campaign. I want to find who wrote that. I want to bite their nose off and spit it back in their fucking face. If you haven't seen the commercial, in the commercial, there's been a bit of a fender bender. <laughs> and the two gentlemen are outside surveying the damage. And they realize they're in a better mood than they should be, considering they've had a little accident and there's a 10-year-old trapped in between the bumpers. <laughs> and they intuitively recognize that their good mood can be directly attributed to their comfy footwear. So they address each other. The one guy goes, you gelling? And the other guy goes, like Magellan. <laughs> and then they suck each other's dicks. <laughs> gelling is in the word Magellan. That's not a real rhyme. How long you been tired? Ever since I retired is not a legitimate rhyme scheme. <laughs> they could have had fun with that. One of the gentlemen was African American. How great would that have been? You gelling like a watermelon. <laughs> Maybe a prostitute walks in and it says to her pimp, you gelling? And he knocks her teeth out, bitch. Get back to pussy selling. Thank you, by the way, for laughing at the racially inappropriate one. <laughs> Why do white people have such a guilt complex? We don't need to feel guilty. Uh, most of us don't need to feel guilty. If you're over 70 and you live in Mississippi, okay. <laughs> Chances are you owe a few apologies. But a lot of times we don't even realize we have it until we see another white person doing something racist and then we all react a certain way because it taps into something in us. Like Michael Richards, oh, that was the greatest thing ever. Because this fucking asshole goes on stage in Los Angeles and yells all this shit that most people only you know, think or yell out a car window. <laughs> and the whole country is in an outrage. Could you believe what he said? Yeah. Why? Because I don't take my social or racial cues from him. He's not a politician. He's not my spiritual advisor. He's a jerk-off who made a living for 10 years sliding on a floor going, Hello, Jerry. I don't give a fuck about anything he thinks. And the fact that Imus got fired is a 